Hello everybody, it's a City Medhaven here today, and I actually want to talk to you guys about a couple of things. No, nothing really specific, except for the buffs that were applied to the M48 A2 T54E2. That is one heck of a name. It was kind of funny, because on stream we were talking about this tank, and originally we thought it was the 8, both 8s, and I was excited for a moment, and then I realized, no, no it wasn't. It was the 10. Okay, so reload from um, 8.6 to 8 seconds, aim time from uh, 1.9 to 1.7. If you're using the build that I'm going to be using on this, you get this down to uh, 1.53. And then shot dispersion during movement from uh, 0.12, which is pretty high up there. It's not super bad, but it, it's definitely high, but at 0 0.01... Well, actually, hold on. 0 0.01? No, 0 0.1. You know what? It's... it's... I just woke up again. I'm struggling streaming. St <laughs> streaming? No, I'm struggling sleeping. So I, I got up and I was like, you know what? If I'm up, I'm up. I'm just going to do this. But shot dispersion during rotation, shot uh, dispersion during movement. Um, with both these being down to 0 0.1, it makes it really responsive. Coming back over it. Not to even mention the fact that this thing's already gone through, what, like three other buff cycles as well, or two? 420 view range, 2,000 hit points. They buffed the hatch on it. They did some a little bit of reworks in the armor, but overall, fantastic. If anything, this tank has made me actually appreciate tanks with 36 rounds of ammunition, making me think on what I actually want to use on them. Oh, now I'm a muppet because we gotta go back. Muppet. Okay, well today. 40% win rate inside the T-54E2, but I maintained a 5,480 uh, W-8 standing inside of it. Well, my overall is actually 2,740, so I gotta say with the most recent buff to it, and also the fact that I decided to try it out again, pull it out, I actually bought it back, because I sold it, because I originally just, I didn't think it was uh, super overwhelming. I've only played 18 matches inside the tank in my entire lifetime. And you can see that, yes, it has not been exactly the most... <laughs> the most influential tank that I can play. However, a tank that is influential is that Cobra T-54 that I'm getting closer every single time. I'm getting ready to do a review on it. 78.95% win rate on the lifetime of the tank right now. With only 19 battles played. This thing is an absolute monstrosity. So, yeah. I'm done being a Muppet. Let's go ahead. Let's take a look at my crew. Let's take a look at what equipment I'm running. I'm running a very basic loadout inside the T-54E2. It's just optics, loader, ventilation. We got 20 standard rounds. We have 14 heat and two high explosives. Uh, along with that, the commander is actually the same commander I use universally in every single one of my medium tanks that are American. I'm going to mute the game chat because I'm a Muppet and keep on forgetting to. We got Born Leader, Rapid Loading, uh, Camouflage Expertise, which, now that I think about it, is not as useful as I think it should be on this tank, due to the fact that your still concealment is actually comparable to some heavy tanks at 403 to 390. I mean, you can improve this if you want to, but the safety net value that you get from this, it's not worth the time invested. Silent Driving, Track Mechanic, Six Sense, Situational Awareness, Off-Road Driving, and Steady Aim. Off-Road Driving, I can say, definitely does benefit the tank, even though you have fantastic terrain resistance to begin with. Right now, we have Firm Terrain at 0.72 and Medium, so we have Hard, Medium, and Soft. Um, medium Terrain is 0.74, Soft Terrain is 1.32. I can say that having the perk on it, it may not sound beneficial, but I was playing with Scareface, and his was actually slower uphill than mine. And the only um, dividing factor between both of our tanks was, in fact, off-road driving. And then detectability, moving, and still, even with silent driving, 388 meters on the move. It, I mean, it, it's that you want to talk about situational, that is situational. I mean, sure, if enemies are at 400, you can feel comfortable backing up a little bit because you zoom in, you spot them out. And I mean, maybe with your view range being 550, get since you got 420 base, might be beneficial. But, eh, it is what it is. 
And due to the fact that I'm not recording matches right now, I've just literally been playing the game and doing my own thing. You know, I, I probably should start recording again. That'd be beneficial. But Sand River in the AMX. Wait a minute. No. T American in 48A2. T 54E2. In the match, it's known as the 120. Uh, called Brain Fart. Hmm. Don't judge me. I'm tired. Alrighty. So, we decided to take left. Originally, Blade was talking about wanting to go on the right side of the map. Out to, uh, let's say... Just work in the back ridge here and providing sniper support. Heading down uh, the, uh, JK line. But I said, nah, let's actually head up and apply some pressure up top here. For Shell, we're gonna miss right here into the RU-251. Um, thing is that with the reload buff in this, you're down to a 5.7 second reload now. And that actually puts it on par to the STB-1, which has, that or had, one of the best DPMs as a medium. However, the difference is, you get this tank, you make a trade-off for mobility, you make, like, you, you sacrifice mobility for armor. Up in the top here, we're going to 268 version 5. I called it out. I kind of told Blade, you know, let's, uh, let's actually sit and wait for this 268 to pull up. That Because he doesn't have gun depression, so what we're going to do is, we're going to pre-aim for his hatch, and then as he decides to come over, we're going to throw a shell into it. This is something that we do quite a bit. Waiting, there we go, there's the pre-shell. Blade wasn't set up and ready to go. Behind us we got a Rosarante, and the map itself is still confusing in the replay system. Uh, good thing is we do fire, we miss, but at least the 268 version 5 doesn't hit us. Now looking at the map, we have some heavy tanks coming up behind us, and in 103, our teammate is still not detected for whatever reason. Thank you, replay system. But applying pressure on the 268 felt like the right car right here, and then being able to come around. And the DPM buff that this tank got some people may not think it's that big of a deal, but having a 0.6 like a 0.6 second increase to a reload really makes a huge difference. I mean, just look at how quick this tank is firing right now. It is throwing shells out left and right, 400 alpha, and it's just really quick. I mean, this is this is really quick. Also, this is the first match I played on the tank of the day, as well. This was literally like, like, I read the buff, I read it off the blade, I said, okay, I'm gonna play it. So we did. We This this match actually went really slow and then really fast. A lot of pressure applied, plus the ammunition loadout inside this, it's very well balanced in my opinion. I'm checking behind me to see what the Rosarante hit points are. But sadly, for whatever reason, the Rosarante doesn't want to pop up at all. No matter what I do. Look at this, that is ridiculous. But, you can see the way the team's loaded out. It's pretty far spread, and not all the enemies are spotted. Yep, thank you, replay system. You are amazing. Here we go. Right back at it. Ah, uh, the gun mechanics, though, they are really jumpy. Good shell straight into his hat with standard rounds. Um, the 258 pin on this as well, plus it has 340 heat pin, does make it quite devastating just because you're able to get out these fast shells, and they have really good penetration behind them. Ah, I should grab my remote. As you guys can tell, I am definitely just not here, like in the slides. So, during the time that we played this tank, it, it was really fast, really aggressive. And, I mean, I only put five matches into it today, but the buff that they gave it, I gotta say, I'm probably gonna be putting a lot more matches inside this, because now it's at a comfortable state. So, compared to the STB-1, which is the only tank that I can really compare the DPM to inside this tank, this one is, it's got 10 more alpha, same fire rate, it's got better view range, but it lacks the concealment, but it makes up for it by having heavier armor on the sides, allowing you to actually side scrape. Here we go, taking our time on the T-57, waiting for him to peak. If he peaks again... I actually can't remember. This This match was uh, 
just playing. And hello, artillery. It's so nice to see you. We all love you, Sky Cancer. It's so balanced, so dynamic. At least I didn't lose half my hit points. Because, I mean, it is a 212A. And that thing, they buffed for whatever reason. It goes 45 now with... Um, like 14 point something power to weight. It's got really good power to weight and it's way too fast and it can self-spot with 390 view range. So I, 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 I kind of disagree with it. But it is what it is. I decided to fall back. And my goal right here was to kind of do a mixed cross-up. Um, if you guys have any idea. Right here, you can head out further right while your teammate's up high to get cross shots into the guys that are working the top ridge. And right here, I did get detected against the T-57, so we took a back path. Actually, just jump back 30 seconds, and then um, fast forward a tad bit right here so you can see the path I took. As I came up and over, T-57 did get spotted. I came to a stop right here. My goal was just to throw a shell down range. Oh my goodness. There we go. Now we can hide the replay. Then come to a stop. Just wait. And even with the, uh, you know, silent driving and camouflage expertise, I mean, I got a little bit of a pull right here without being detected. Because it, 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 it is useful in a way, but primarily it just, it doesn't feel that reliable on this tank. You would, there's two, probably two better perks that you can use, for instance, uh, taking snapshot on this to keep that blue man a little bit tighter, but knowing that they did readjust the, uh, overall dispersion of the tank on the move and everything else. You probably actually don't need to use that. So let's go ahead back off here. And yeah, no, this is, I gotta say, they did really good. Blades already went ahead and pulled down right there. You can see them smoking off in the distance. And our goal now is just to kind of provide a little bit of cover towards one another. Both enemies are down to a one-shot. Blade is actually on reload, I believe, right now. 177 hit points and dropped by the T-57. And there we go. Putting our 309 down range. Finishing him off. Down the seven standards and eight premium rounds. We're going to miss one. And I can't remember if I pushed or if I stopped or whatever it was. Hit by artillery. Sorry about that. <laughs> there, there. They were just as confused that I was awake as I was. So right here, we got the standard throwing down range. We're going to miss it. But, uh, you know, high explosive. I always recommend to take a couple. Here we go. We're going to ricochet. Kind of hoping that I could use those to kind of block a heat round just in case. Good ricochet. We're going to throw a shell down. Take down the 268 version 5. And bath. Is that the 705A is left up on the left side right here. I don't know if I actually went after him directly or not. I might have. Or did I miss? I think I missed a shot. I did miss a shot. Oh, crap. Okay, here we go. This is actually a good shot. And uh, I'm surprised. And I missed it right here off to the right side. The 268 version 5 did get spotted. So my I came over and I swapped shells. We throw one into the MX. No, oh, okay, never mind. We do shoot one high explosive, but it was a miss. It was being prepared for that uh, waffle. All right, never mind. I I made a mistake. Ricochet. It's the clear. Gonna push up. You guys can judge me later. Actually, we can just speed this up a little bit. Bring it up. Slow it down. Let's go ahead and drop the uh, overlay there. And now I'm in a little bit of a panic state. I was like, where'd he go? And then I pull up and right here, spotting out the 705A, which is not the 705A. I like to pull up further back, throwing some shells in range. I don't know if he was distracted or if he quit out or what he did, but it was a four to five right now. And I was just a little bit confused in what the 705 was doing right here. I was aiming for the ammo rack because I knew where the ammo rack was to be able to pop the top since if he was AFK and he looked away for a split second or whatever it was that he was doing I wanted to guarantee that you know ammo rack which you can if you know where the ammo rack locations are and then the drive down the further right because we already know the 705 is going to be coming around the right side right there so we wanted to get into a better position to be able to take a pop shot sadly we hit top plate rather than aiming for the low plate 
And there we go. One down low. And the armor on this is actually really surprising. And yes, auto aim. That was actually a uh, lock shot right there. And I remember that one. I actually kind of thought to myself that I need to stop doing the locks. And getting in close to try and rely on the thick armor that this thing has all around. We'll actually check out the armor model after this one. Because they did do a couple of buffs to it. The hatch is thicker compared to what it is in PC. And putting a heat round into the top plate. And getting down to my last final three shells. And artillery getting dropped by artillery. So let's go ahead, return the garage. And sadly, that match actually did not load up the screenshots for the match. So I'm kind of happy that I have one, two, three just in case, unless it's actually inside the profile tab, because there has been moments it's not been. T57, Cobra, M48, Pilsen, Prokhorovka Highway, it is not there anymore, which means, yes, I have to come over to here and get this thing lined up. Like a Muppet, I am. So, this match was 6 kills, 9,192 damage dealt, and 1,962 base experience. Uh, jumping over, made 125,000 silver off this. It was a mastery badge, I mean, clearly with 9,000 damage. And then jumping to the back page here. Blade ending up in 10th position, but he did really good for what was needed. It was, uh, he got rushed, taken down, got hit by a T-57 and rushed by the 268 version 5. But, yeah. No, you guys, this was... That was an awesome game. Um, primarily, the buffs that were all applied today, uh, one of them, I was actually talking with uh, Scareface about the... Uh, tier 9, the uh, T-54E1. So, the concealment while moving... Concealment moving from 1.29 to 0.87. I'm actually kind of wondering what that could mean. I don't think it is what I think it is, but it's not a heavy tank. It's not a medium tank anymore. They moved it to a heavy tank, which I'm actually having a big problem with. So it's still concealment is actually a little bit worse, I believe, compared to the last patch. I'm not 100% sure. I did play it during the last patch, and I did enjoy the faster reload at 20... 27 seconds, I believe is what it was, with the 255 premium pin. Uh, camouflage paint bonus from 0.3 to 0.2. Okay, so that's actually, they made it worse. Advanced concealment bonus from 0.10 to 0.5. Is that better or worse? There's a 5% oh, bonus rather than a 10% bonus? I, I mean, maybe they made it worse? The lower number is worse for the camel, so camel value? Not 100%. They did increase the hit points from 1750 to 1850. Um, health burn per second from 135 to 146. I actually have no idea what this means right here. It'd be nice if they made that a bit more specific. But then lowering the top speed from 43.5 to 38 was a big hindrance. And top speed reverse from 20 to 14. Uh, this is your chassis 1 turret rotation from 44 to 38. They slowed it down. And then they increased shot dispersion by 0.02 which made it a little bit worse, but they did give it a 310 heat pin while PC has a 310 APCR. That travels at like 1375 or 1373 velocity, and then they lowered the... Yeah, they lowered the speeds of the turret, they increased the dispersion values, and then health regeneration per second for, like, whatever... Whatever, whatever this is makes no sense to me. Hall armor from 110 to 127. Turret armor from 110 to 152. Thing is, this is not beneficial. This doesn't make it a heavy. Uh, added HE shell, which is nice. They swapped the APCR to heat. So they went from uh, 210 to 255. 210 to 255 to 248. 310 then 53. They added a high explosive that is 420. Honestly, there's no point to fire this HE shell because 420, 30 more alpha on that is kind of a joke. Uh, reload speed from 33 to 37. Initial clip. 
from 2.2 to 2 seconds, accuracy from 0.4 to 0.38, so that's kind of a buff there. Uh, spring during turret rotation, they increased it. Uh, after shot dispersion, they did lower it to make it a little bit nicer. And then they redid the experience on the engine and the gun, which is nice to see. Um, also, the uh, penetration difference on the 90mm right here for the uh, T69 was also transferred over to the Tier 9 as well. So that's the buffs that they did over on the uh, new... Um, okay, so I love this. American Tier 9 T-54E1 medium tank. It's labeled medium tank here inside the patch notes. Okay, we converted the T-54E1 from a medium tank to a heavy tank for battle transitions as you move to the T-57 heavy. This change includes a reduction in mobility and increase in health and better penetration values for both guns, with the 105 receiving a heat premium shell to match the uh, reset of the line and playstyle. We also adjusted the unlock order for modules you're going to gain access to to, to get the top gun. So, let's talk about this. It's converted to a heavy. Okay. Whatever. Just kidding. It's not a whatever. My biggest problem with this is that the T-54E2... Let, let's look at an actual heavy real quick. Let's go look at the armor. 254, uh, 228, 190, 158, 152, 147, 139, 127, 101, 94. What's the side looking like? We've got uh, 63, we got 59, we got... 57, and none of those can be overmatched by 105s. We can come further up. Let's actually go on lower the further we go down. We got 44 along the top sides there. That can be overmatched by 150s and uh, 14s. Okay, now let's go to the T54E1. Let's go armor viewer. 177, 152, 127, 114, 108, 101. Uh, 76, sure. Uh, 69, sure. Nice. 63, 60, 57, 50. Oh, okay. Okay. Problems. A couple of problems. Uh, number one being, this doesn't have the armor to pr play as a heavy tank. Your turret's a little bit unreliable. Um, the most consistent part that people bounce off of on this turret is actually this bar right on top that's 50. This was one of the most consistent spots that I've seen people bounce off of. And you got your 63 in the left and right. This is the most consistent parts that people actually bounce off on this turret because of the way that it's made. Then your actual top armor in the further back is 25. So it's easy to hit that if you're above them. Um, problem being, I got penetrated by a tusk twice and killed. So, yeah, I mean, I'm a heavy tank that can get pinned by high explosives from a light tank. Uh, that, that makes so much sense. Same thing about the Cobra T-54. It is, by the way, the full premium loadout on this is because I was like, screw it, people are playing it like this right now. How aggressive can it be? And, oh my gosh, it's aggressive. It's stupid. But once I actually drill it down, that, that loadout's going to be changed. But, yeah, just the fact that they're changing these tanks and they're making fake heavies. Um, we're not using the 357 system that PC is using. We are using class base matchmaking where it's going to line up the same tier, same tank, and it's going to play versing each other. But then all of a sudden you take this medium tank and you're like, it's a heavy now. But now on the enemy team, you got a 705, or you got a T10, or you got an M103. What, what? What is the T-54E1 going to do against an actual heavy? Bounce and then get pinned every single time consistently? Sure, you have burst potential, but a burst potential tank like the AMX-50B I think would be the greatest example. They converted that to a medium tank because it never really performed as a heavy, but they left the concealment the way it was. I think that these tanks would be the same way. Keep them as a medium, but destroy their concealment. That way at least with our class-based matchmaking that we're using, because we're not PC, we're console, and they, they're they not using the same matchmaking system, which is how a lot of these tanks are designed to play against, like how Tier 8s are made. They're made around the 357 matchmaking system. So, yeah, that's pretty much about it. Other than that, you guys, if you manage to sit here through the 24 minutes and just a single match and me just uh, muttering like a Muppet, then thank you. 
you guys have a great day, afternoon, night, whatever time it is that you're catching this, and I'll catch you guys all in the next one. Just know my opinion on what they have been doing is extremely negative because it's we're using class-based matchmaking, not 357. You guys have a good day. I'm out of here.